All right, learning objective six in this chapter introduces you to some financial analysis that I think is very, uh, very good to know. Um, it's used quite a bit. As a matter of fact, if you ever watch uh, Shark Tank, um, you'll, you'll always hear about some of these types of things. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, you, you can guess which one as we go, but there's definitely uh, some linkage to real life here. So we're going to learn uh, two particular ratios. One is called the gross profit rate. Uh, back in the day, we used to call it the gross profit margin, but gross profit rate sounds good. And the second is something called the profit margin, um, which back in the day, we used to call the net profit margin. But anyway, you know, still sounds pretty good. So first things first, and these are the only two uh, ratios that we're learning in this chapter. The gross profit rate really is simply a percentage, right? Um, they look at the gross profit and they compare it to the actual net sales. That's it. That's all it is. So <clears throat> for example, if you bought and I'll break it down to a very simple product. So you bought something for a dollar uh, and you paid a dollar for the store. That dollar would be the sale. Let's say it cost the store uh, 40 cents to buy it. So their cost of goods sold is 40 cents. Their gross profit would be 60 cents on that sale of a dollar. So 60 cents over a dollar would give you the gross profit rate of that item. Okay, so it's really just looking at it from that perspective. Uh, we again, we used to call it a markup. <clears throat> they still use that term. There's a lot of interchangeable terms in accounting and finance, and you'll you'll still see all of that. But it's important because the gross profit rate is you want to make sure you're charging a high enough gross profit uh, that both makes you competitive. So people think you're charging them a good price, but is also going to be profitable. That's not easy. <laughs> that's not easy, but that's the trick. That's the trick. Let's see how it's done. What you have here is the formula for the gross profit rate right here. Again, it's simply the gross profit divided by the net sales. Again, the gross profit is on the income statement the net sales is on the income statement. So you only need two pieces of information from the income statement to figure this out, all right? This is the information for REI, Recreational Equipment, for the year 2014. They had a $960 million uh, gross profit on over 2.2 billion in sales. So their gross profit uh, rate was over 43%. Now, what does that mean? <clears throat> it simply means for every dollar that you paid that they collected in a sale, right? They had a 43 cent gross profit. They had a 43 cent gross profit. Uh, that's basically what that says, right? That's their starting point. For the exact same year, when you look at the information from uh, Dick Sporting Goods, <clears throat> their gross profit rate was only 31% compared to REI. Well, what does that mean? That means for every dollar they collected in a sale, their gross profit was only 31% of that dollar or 31 cents out of the dollar. That was their gross profit. See, REI is collect is has a 43 cent out of every dollar gross profit. So it's a higher amount that they're starting with. The industry, and the industry in this case is the, uh, re the, the sporting goods retail industry, you know, um, they have a 34% uh, profit as an average in the industry, which means for every dollar they collect in a sale, they're going to keep four, 34 cents of that as a gross profit. Okay. So that's the gross profit rate or gross profit margin, that's a very important thing. And this is what you hear a lot about uh, on Shark Tank. <clears throat> you have a lot of uh, inventors that go on the show that have great products. 
And that's the one of the first questions that that come out of of the mouths of whether it's Mr. Wonderful or Mark Cuban or Rob or whatnot. They'll say, "What's your gross profit? What's your gross margin? Uh, what are you selling it for? You know, what's it cost you?" And they'll calculate the gross profit margin right there, um, because they know there's something to this. They know you need to have a good gross margin to be profitable in in the merchandising uh, business. Uh, and all of them have their own expertise, so they they sort of know that. So next time you watch the show, if you do. Uh, listen for the questions that get to the gross profit. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and again, gross profit and net sales, you get these numbers from the income statement. Matter of fact, the multi step income statement gives you both, right? This number and that number, right? Multi step income statement, no problem. Now, the profit margin really talks about. Once the company is done uh, paying all the other expenses, what's left out of every sale that they make? So basically the percentage base is um, the net income of a, for every sales dollar. That's really, so it's the net income, the bottom line income divided by the net sales. That's basically all it is. Okay, and so here is the profit margin ratio right here. You have the net income of that company divided by the net sales of that company. Again, net income is the bottom, that last number on the income statement. Net sales will be at the top, right, for sales. You're simply comparing all of that. <clears throat> so let's go to our friends at REI for that same year, 2014. Well, lo and behold, they did have a $44 million profit at the end of 2014 after everything was said and done. And that was the profit left on over $2.2 billion of sales, which means that literally they have a 2% profit margin. That means that they kept 2% out of every dollar in sales as their profit two cents out of every dollar in this case right so that's that's pretty small but that's typical in retail believe it or not walmart only keeps about three cents out of every dollar and after everything is paid for uh for its net profit margin um so you know some retailers are a little bit better some retailers are a bit worse and of course some retailers aren't making a profit um and so that's it so for for 2014 when you look at dix you have a different picture here uh dix is actually keeping a lot more of every sales dollar as a profit they're keeping over five percent of every dollar in sales as a profit so when the customer comes in for every dollar the customer is giving dix sporting goods they're keeping five cents of that, a little more than five cents of that as a profit for them after everything is said and done. So that's a much, much higher rate than 2% and much better. And if I was a stockholder, I would be much happier <laughs> with the results from Dick Sporting Goods keeping five cents out of every dollar than the results of your REI, which is only keeping two cents out of every dollar for the net, for the net profit. Uh, the industry is more in line with what Dix is doing uh, in terms of their profit margins are about 5% as well, at least in 2014. Now, again, the, I wouldn't, 2020 was just, was just a horrible year. I don't even know where to start with that, but I'm very interested to find uh, those financial statements from companies to see how they did do. Um, but a lot of retailers are in, um, very competitive fields, and there's not much profit margin in those stores in retail, which is why a lot of retailers are going out of, well, they they were struggling before the pandemic and the pandemic just simply pushed them over the edge. So they're closing a lot, a lot of stores. And um, because there's just not much profit margin there. You know, there's just not much profit margin. If you don't get those sales the way you want it, you're not making a profit. 
Um, and if you're not making a profit every day you open the store, you're losing money. That doesn't make any sense either. So, um, so there's a lot to this and it's a very competitive market, which is why retailers um, don't always last very long. They don't always last very long or they get beat out by other retailers that are doing it better. They have a better way of doing things. And so that's, that's what you see, that's what you see. Okay, um, so the do it exercise at the end of chapter six, really the, what I'm focusing on is your ratios, the gross profit ratio, uh, ratio and the profit margin ratio is really what you wanna get out of uh, objective six here, okay? And here we have a company, Rachel Rose, uh, they have data from 2017 in this column. They have data from 2016 in this column from their income statement. Okay. And they want to know first and foremost, what is the gross profit rate for each of these years? Now the gross profit rate, of course, is the gross profit over the net sales. Well, you don't see the gross profit is not listed here, but you can calculate it because you know that gross profit is net sales minus the cost of goods sold. That's your gross profit. So you put your gross profit back over your net sales and you'll get your gross profit rate. So for 2017, for this company, you have 80,000 of net sales minus 40,000 of cost of goods sold, which gives you your gross profit of 40,000 divided over the 80,000 of sales. So you have a 50% gross profit rate in 2017, which is really high. And in 2016, again, you have net sales here, you have cost of goods sold, they don't give you the gross profit, but you can calculate just by subtracting this. So that's 60,000 of gross profit over 120,000 in sales, 50% gross profit rate for both years. So that's this pretty stable gross profit rate. But what about the profit margin? Well, the profit margin is the net income divided by the net sales, right? And so for 2017 and 2016 respectively, what you see here is the gross profit of eight, uh, sorry, uh, net income of 18,000 over your net sales of 80,000. That's a pretty damn good profit margin. That means for every dollar they've collected from the customer in a sale, over 22%, over 22 cents of that dollar is their profit at the end of the day. That's really awesome. Um, Apple has this type of profit margin. Apple has this type of profit margin. A lot of, a lot of companies do not, but Apple does. Um, in 2016, they had $20,000 of, of net income over 120,000 of net sales, that's 16.7%. Again, this is an excellent profit margin, there's no doubt about it, but they're clearly doing better in 2017 and that's a good thing. Their sales did go down uh, and it looks like their profit went down, but they're actually keeping a lot more money from every sale, which is great, which is really awesome. Okay, and that's basically where we're ending our study here, chapter six. Questions?